My name is Lubos Miachki and I am an associate software engineer at Red Hat and currently I'm working on the pulp project and today I'm going to talk about one of the ways of updating edge devices in particular you, by using OS3 and pulp. So let's begin with some motivation. What are edge devices? Edge devices are basically devices that are laying on the edge of the infrastructure and can be used for real data analysis and monitoring. And in order to always have these devices up to date, you need to run some kind of upgrade management because when you have deployed hundreds of devices, it's really a tough task to properly have them updated all the time. And there are a bunch of tools that can be used for managing updates and managing repositories that will be used for running updates. And one of those tools is Pulp. Operating system for operating systems for edge devices should be immutable and image based. What basically means that when you have a running image, you shouldn't be able to apply any changes without rebooting it. And by image based, I mean that once an operating system is image based, that basically means that there is a copy of operating system and all data associated with associated with it, which were created during runtime. O operating systems for edge devices should also support atomic updates. That means that either all update steps finish with success or none of them. For instance, Fedora IoT supports atomic updates and rollbacks. That means that you can roll back and forth between different versions of content and repositories. And one of the technologies that can be used for, let's say, managing updates or uh, operating system file trees is OS3, which is some kind of like a Git for Linux-based operating systems binaries. And it supports content addressed objects stored with branches. So for instance, when you are an administrator and you have two different environments running, one for development and one for release, you can create two separate branches and commit separately to both of them. In OS3, they are, they are called reps instead of branches. And this technology is also suited for performing atomic upgrades of complete file system trees. So here is the example of how you can commit changes with OS3. So initially you just create an empty repository, then you can create a new file within a random directory and then just commit it like you are doing in Git. On top of the OS3 technology, there was implemented the RPM OS3 utility that combines OS3 and accepts RPM packages, which basically allows you to do client-side package layering, which is similar to adding browser extensions. So you are adding more and more things to the existing environment. And for downloading updates, within edge devices, uh, you can see that you configure a bunch of, <clears throat> bunch of URLs here that can be used for downloading updates. For example, this one file, etcos3remotes.t is taken from a federal IoT operating system. And from this URL, updates are downloaded, which is basically a remote OS3 repository that contains commits for those updates and content. And RPM OS3 utility is integrated with Fedora IoT. So when you want to run an upgrade or update your software, 
you just simply run OS RP and OS3 upgrade and reboot the system to apply those changes. And you as an administrator always have to have an overview of what type of content is behind this URL. So repository management for doing such stuff is really important. And thanks to that, OS3 itself also supports multiple branches inside one repository. So you can use OS3 for doing so. Besides that, for repository management and for high level workflows, you can also use Pulp. Pulp is a platform for managing repositories. So you can sync content from a remote repository. You can manage it locally. You can update it and modify it and then expose it to end users. So at the left side of this image, you just have a couple of pu public artifact repositories like PyPI and Docker Hub. You can sync content from those repositories to pulp and do the needful inside your local virtual machine or local machine that runs the pulp and then deploy content to your different environments as needed. Besides that, pulps, pulp allows you to version content. So once you update, modify, or even delete some content, a new repository version is created for you and you can decide which repository version you are going to expose to your end users. And in Pulp, we recently added support for the OS3 technology. So you can use Pulp for syncing remote OS3 repositories and manage that content locally. So for example, you can take a Fedora IoT official OS3 repository, you can add more commits to it and publish it as your own. So let's take a look at a quick demo. I'm going to show you how to build a new Fedora IoT image with a couple of commits. And I will show you how to import those commits to pulp and expose it to an edge device. And after that, I will show you how to perform atomic upgrade and rollback while downloading updates from the pulp repository. So right now I have two running virtual machines. One is called main that is considered to be, let's say a main machine for an administrator to work on and VM1, which can be an edge device placed somewhere remotely. So this is the main, this is the main virtual machines. And let's say I want to install a nano, a nano package inside my VM1 machine. So right now there is no nano package. And in order to create an OS3 commit and to build an image from it, you need to create a so-called blueprint file that contains all packages that you are willing to install. And with that, you are just going to use tool called Composer CLI that creates calls to the OS build composer server and you can afterwards create or build new images with the OST builder server. So if you want to install nano or create a commit that installs nano package, you just push the blueprint like this and then you run the, the start OS3 composer like this. I'm not going to run it right now because it could take some time and it could take more time, especially when you're doing a live demo. So 
I, I prepared all those images, like for installing Nano and also for installing Vim package beforehand. And as you can see, there are two images that were built. One is containing Vim and one is containing Nano. If you want to download those images to your local machine, you just run an image and paste here the image ID and it will download you a tarball file, which basically is structured like a simple OS3 repository. So it will contain some configuration, extension objects, preps, state, and temporary files. And it will have the same structure as an OS3 repository. So let's now import those commits to our PAL machine. PAL basically works in the following way. So you initially create a new repository for an OS3 repository like this, blah, blah. And you can import commits to that repository when you specify the path to the tarball and uh, the branch name you want to use. I already, uh, I already created a repository that will contain all those commits. It's called Fedora IoT and it has two versions. One version contains the Vim package and one version contains the Nano package. So when we want to browse, when we want to see uh, what commit we are currently referencing from the rep branch, it's checksum is CE0B and so on from the version one and from the version two, we have different one, which coins, which contains the theme package. So I have now a repository that contains two OS3 commits and I want to expose it to end users, to the virtual machine one that's basically virtualized. So I'm going to create a new distribution And this distribution will expose all that content that it's lying uh, within that repository. So the content should be accessed at this URL. So when we are trying to access it, just let me change this host name because I'm using SSH port forwarding. And when we are going to, let's say, query the repository like this, let's figure out stable. Wrong version number. Well, there is some. Well, I'm using HTTPS and I should be using. HTTP instead, sorry. A, and there is a commit that was referenced in the second version. And when I want to expose a different version, which will contain only the nano package, I will just run distribution update. And then when I will query the same endpoint, I will receive different checksum, which will contain. So now I exposed the US repository and now I want to install it inside my virtual machine that is considered to be an energy device. So the configuration for uh, a remote OS3 repository that is used for downloading updates is right here. So I'm just going to comment these lines 
and type my type the reference for my for my pulp repository and you'll turn off the GPG verification and specify the ref name federal stable x IoT like this. Right now, if I'm going to run RPM OS3 status, the latest checked commit within the running instance is official commit from the Fedora distribution. And when I'm going to run RPM OS3 upgrade check, you will see that it will try to upgrade four new packages, a 71 app. Right now, I do not have the nano package installed and I have built a new Fedora IoT image inside the main machine with OS3 build composer. And now I'm going to install the update that should contain new versions of Fedora IoT and also nano package. OS3. Staging deployment. Remote connection was closed. And as you can see, the machine or the edge device is rebooting and applying those changes. As you can see, there are two images you can always pick from. Those are the two latest uh, images that were installed. And you can just roll back and forth between them. Okay, seems like we are. Okay, the machine rebooted and I have nano package installed now. Okay, great. And what if I want to expose the BIM package? I'm just going to update distribution like this from the administrator's perspective. And I'm just going to run OS3 upgrade. Check. There are going to be added five new packages. Team is currently not installed. I'm going to install OS uh, upgrades like this. Can take some time. And all this upgrade stuff can be automated. So you can just write a Kickstarter file to set a new update policy that will be regularly run. So you do not have to always look into an edge device to SSH or something like that. So it can be can automatically pull changes by itself. Machine is rebooting. Okay, it's running. I'm in and now I should have the BIM package installed. Great. And what if I decide to get rid of the BIM package? I just run the rollback like this. Now I'm going to run the reboot. Machine is rebooting again. Okay. And 
and I don't have the DIM package installed, it's just nano. And what if I decide to get rid of the pulp repository and roll back to the repository that is officially distributed by Fedora? I'm just going to remove those lines, uncomment those lines, and run RPM OS3, upgrade. It will tell me that the time star timestamps are not in a chronological order. So I'm just going to run on the chemistry upgrade, allow downgrade, because I was adding new commits after that. In pub. And now when I run CTL reboot, I should be back on the original Fedora IOP image where there is no nano package or BIM package installed. Okay, so no beam, no nano. And that's all from my side. I'm happy to answer your questions if there are any. Cool, thanks Lubos. That was a great presentation and your demo worked. <laughs> <laughs> so there is, there is one question from Jan. Uh, how long does it usually take to build an updated image via Composer CLI? Uh, let's say about 20 minutes on my machine. That's, I have ThinkPad T480. Cool. And, okay. And you wanted to plug the Pulp project, correct? For discussion after this, if anyone has any further questions. Yeah, you can find us on at discourse.pulpproject.org. I'm not sure if I can paste it to the chat uh, somewhere. I think we can do it for you. Right on. Well, thanks a lot, Lubos. And I just want to remind everyone that you can go to Work Adventure after this session, or the main stage is having a keynote soon. And thanks, thanks a lot, everyone, for coming to DevConf 2022. And we'll see you around. Thank you. Bye.